Traveling in Iran is like going back in time to the very dawn of civilization, discovering legends that date from the birth of mankind. Iran is a vast country with breathtaking scenery, a large part of which is located on a plateau above 1,500 meters, which allows for an absolutely unique habitat and climate. In cultural terms, the country can be identified with ancient Persia, a magnificent universe of peoples, languages and religions, an immense history book which tells of the origin of our civilization. For the last 3,000 years at least, the vast expanses of Iranian plains have been the land of the kings amongst all kings, a testimony of countless and extraordinary works of art and history. The plateau which extends from the Caspian Sea to the Persian Gulf alternates between fascinating desert landscape and extensive agricultural land, an oasis of fertility and civilization in a sea of silent isolation. Iranian agriculture takes advantage of constantly updated mechanization even though it is not unusual to meet groups of farmers who still use ancient and very efficient techniques anchored to thousands of years of experience and largely due to man's patient and skillful handwork. A simple, imposing, profoundly peaceful and beautiful scene which sheds some light on the deeply rooted tranquility of this nation. It is not surprising to happen upon windmills resembling those of an old scrapbook. Large grindstones for wheat slowly turning under the watchful eye of men whose appearance has been chiseled by the passing of time. Iranian cuisine is simple, genuine, tasty and absolutely natural. The best you can imagine nourishing yourself with. Kebabs, speared meat with rice, vegetables and every type of fruit imaginable. Not to mention delicious desserts. One of the country's most colourful characteristics is its nomadic tribes, who form large and intimate communities, continually moving from one place to another in pursuit of the season. Along our path, we chance upon a small group of a few dozen people who have set up a fully equipped camp where many activities are taking place, both for personal needs and for manufacturing of handcrafted materials to be sold in the city. Ancient rituals are performed with extraordinary skill, repeated throughout the centuries and passed down from times when man did not have any means beside his own hands with which to produce butter, cheese and to spin wool. Hundreds of kilometers from the nearest city, we discover another community where once again we witness women in charge of manufacturing large carpets, a valuable means of sustenance for the entire nomadic group. Most Iranians live in large modern cities, especially in the capital, Tehran, an immense megalopolis with a population of more than 12 million. The Monument to Liberty, with its elegant and imposing structure, symbolizes the city's desire to project itself forward into the future.
The city is crossed by large thoroughfares thronged with life by day and night. To discover this great country's true charm, you must travel far, beginning in the south from Yazd, situated at an altitude of 1,200 meters, and bordering on two enormous deserts, one salty, the other sandy. The city's history is ancient and glorious. In 1272, Marco Polo traveled across the land, leading us to imagine it through his flattering description. The color of clay makes the area look like an extension of the immense desert which surrounds it. Yet the population is active and dynamic in a city important for the production of silk and textiles, counting 12 bazaars, the principal one displaying Iran's most impressive facade. The Wind Towers, the so-called Badgir, are the city's most celebrated feature. Tall and slender towers rise up throughout the country, but in Yazd alone reveal a particular historical and architectural splendor. Very ancient constructions planned with expertise in order to exploit the wind, ingeniously channeled towards its base, producing wonderful ventilation. We are admiring the tallest one in the city now to be a luxury dwelling which will have a perfect natural air conditioning system. The city boasts one of the most important mosques in Iran, the Friday Mosque, dating back to the 1500s, erected on the site of a previous building, probably dating from the 14th century. The majestic entrance gate, entirely covered by splendid blue tiles, is flanked by two impressive minarets, the highest in Iran bearing a 17th century inscription. The interior is wide and breathtaking, entirely covered by colorful carpets with richly decorated walls and vaulting. Another voice, similar to the traditional voice of the Muezzin, welcomes us in a city gym. Sports and attention to one's body have always been attitudes that Iranians value. On our visit, we see a particular way to exercise. A skilled percussionist accompanies the movements, which take place in a circular area, creating a fascinating and entertaining aerobic exercise. You must not leave Yazd without visiting a very important community which can help in understanding the complex social life of this nation, the Zoroastrian community. Iran has the largest number of followers of this ancient religion. Founded about 3,000 years ago by the prophet philosopher Zoroaster, otherwise known as Zarathustra in the West, whose life is enveloped in legend. Born in what is currently eastern Iran, between 1000 and 500 BC, he left his native home at the age of 20 to dedicate himself to religious contemplation, living in mountains and the desert, until he reached a state of revelation around the age of 30 or 40. The Zoroastrian symbol is the winged figure of the prophet called Ahura Mazda, which was also the symbol of Persian imperial power for centuries. Zoroastrian rituals take place around a fire, since the followers bestow a high symbolic value on fire. The most important community temple exists in Yadz. In it lies the sacred fire that has been burning for almost 2,500 years, 
Legend states that it was lit in 470 BC. In the outskirts, there is a small ancient Zoroastrian city situated at the foot of two hills on which stood traditional buildings, giving rise to the Towers of Silence. These became open cemeteries, preserved until about 50 years ago, in which, according to tradition, the dead were placed, allowing time and birds to see to their burial. To better understand the rituals of this community, we move toward a far away and isolated place where each year Zoroastrians from all over the world gather to celebrate. The assembly takes place in one of the most sacred places for this religion, a tiny village practically hidden within the great mountains of the desert and built around a cave from which purifying water flows. The location, at a height of about 2,000 meters, is called Chak Chak. Immersed in an atmosphere of peace and serenity, simple yet touching rituals are performed lasting hours and followed by adults and children equally enthralled. Another demonstration of the country's open-mindedness towards other religions, including Christianity, is that they are all practiced publicly without any kind of limitation. Called the sweet city by Iranians, Shiraz is definitely one of the most welcoming and pleasant cities in the country. At an altitude of almost 1,500 meters, it makes even the hottest summers tolerable. It boasts splendid vineyards and its people are renowned for their humor, intelligence and vivacity. In the medieval Islamic world, Shiraz was one of the most important cities in Persia and during the second half of the 18th century was actually the capital of the country. It is a very hospitable city, both for its climate and for the surroundings, which greet visitors who are received as welcome guests, a tradition that is typical of the local culture. For centuries, the castle, situated in the heart of the city, has been one of the strongest images of the country. It was built by Karim Khan to raise the image of the city and to show its power to its legendary rival, Isfahan.
In front of the castle, Karim Khan erected a delightful octagonal building, the Musée Pass. Originally used to welcome important guests at official celebrations and subsequently used as his tomb. Now the building houses a small but evocative museum dedicated to the great ruler and his legendary times. Two of the greatest Persian poets were born and lived in Shiraz, and their tombs, immersed in colourful scented gardens, are well worth a visit. The first tomb we come to is that of the poet Hafez. This was erected again by Karim Khan in the second half of the 18th century, and is surrounded by a wonderfully preserved garden. The tomb itself is situated inside an elegant octagonal pavilion. The inscription on the marble surface is an extract from one of the poet's works. He was one of the literary figures who shaped the Persian language. The next tomb we visit is that of another great Iranian poet, whose name was Sadi, a sheikh who lived in the 13th century. His works are inspired by a philosophy of humility and piety, couched in elaborate poetry, containing many expressions which have become part of the Persian language. The tomb stands on the site where he died, near a natural spring which is still a place of pilgrimage for the city's inhabitants. But Shiraz has always been famous for its wonderful gardens, such as this one, known as Bage Eram, or the Garden of Paradise. This splendid park near the university surrounds a 19th century palazzo whose fine architecture is richly decorated with wall paintings. Shiraz Bazaar is one of the best known in Iran. When it was first set up, nearly three centuries ago, the city governors wanted to make Shiraz into one of the most important commercial centers in the country. Its wide brickwork roof provides an ideal temperature at all times of year. As usual, the bazaar is a kaleidoscope of colors with an interesting selection of local products and handicrafts, such as carpets, cloth, spices and a variety of marvellous objects.
The city is lively and interesting, and it is a pleasure to wander through its piazzas and gardens. Contrary to what many of us in the West think, foreigners are welcomed with respect and dignity. Religious fundamentalism seems to be more a case of trying to preserve traditions, some of which are thousands of years old. Visitors are politely requested to observe these customs, sometimes with a whispered hint. Those who feel that a trip to Iran is a risky undertaking are far from the mark. There are few other places where the inhabitants are so tolerant towards foreigners. They keep their instinctive curiosity under control with proud bearing and polite behavior which impress even the most skeptical. We see an example of this when we visit one of the most sacred and spectacular places in the whole city, the Mosque of the Mirrors. This great temple was built over the tomb of Syed Mir Ahmad, brother of the Imam Reza, who died in Shiraz in 835 AD. Towards the mid-14th century, a mausoleum was erected over his tomb, and since then, the crypt has become an important sanctuary for the Shiites with an endless stream of pilgrims. They gather before the tomb, wrapped by religious devotion, and as they leave, they walk backwards so as not to turn their backs on him. What really astonishes visitors is the thousands of pieces of mirror glass that cover every corner of the walls and ceilings. They illuminate the surroundings with a spectacular and ever-changing light, giving the impression of being inside an extraordinary and vast diamond. It is truly a once-in-a-lifetime experience.